Have you often wondered why your salary in an appointment letter or your cost to company is so high, but what you actually get in hand at the end of the month is so low? Now, companies typically use five tricks to increase your salary so that your cost to company is very high, but your monthly in hand is actually very low. In this video, I'm going to talk about those five tricks company use and which ones you should be careful about when you're negotiating for your next salary. So the first trick companies use is called joining bonus. So what is joining bonus? When you join a new place of work, a company will give you a bonus. It typically ranges for people in their 20s between 50,000 to 4 lakhs, depending on what stage of life you are at. Now, the trick with joining bonus is that if you leave within 12 to 18 months, most companies make you return that joining bonus. Also, the joining bonus increases the base only for the first year. So for instance, if your fixed salary is 12 lakhs and the joining bonus is 3 lakhs, your first year, the salary is 12 plus 3, 15 lakhs. But in your second year, you don't have the joining bonus. So your base is reducing from 15 lakhs to 12 lakhs. So this is the first way in terms of how companies increase your package when you're joining them. The second way companies increase your package is by adding the element of gratuity. So what is gratuity? Gratuity is a law by the government of India that says that if you have spent five years working for a particular company, you get a certain amount as a goodwill amount. So that amount is 15 days of your basic pay into the number of years you have served. Now, some companies add the gratuity amount into your pay packet. And why is this not correct? This is not correct because a lot of people don't serve till five years. Most people leave a job after one year or two years or three years. And gratuity is applicable only when you finish five years. Also, every company is bound to give you gratuity. So it's not a difference in money you are actually making. The Third way companies use to increase your package is variable pay. So variable pay, when you're discussing with HR, HR will tell you that you have a certain fixed pay and depending on your performance on the year or your rating, you will have a certain variable pay. In some cases, the variable pay even goes to 50 to 60% of your fixed pay. Now, how do companies increase this? The companies increase this by actually saying you can earn up to some ridiculous number, but you never really have a shot. So how do you see through this? So this is the question you should ask HR when you're negotiating with them. If you get an average rating, what percentage of the total variable pay will you actually get? If a company is fair for an average rating, you should get around 50% of the total variable pay you can earn. If a company says, if you get an average rating and you get only 10 or 20% of the total variable pay you can earn, you should know something is not correct and you should see through that gimmick. The fourth way in which companies actually increase your salaries is through ESOP, Employee Stock Ownership Plan. This is how it plays out typically. If you're joining a startup at an early stage, they'll typically tell you that we are giving you so many units and a unit is potentially worth so much. So this is the amount you're getting in. So how do you factor in ESOPs? In my view, if your startup is not getting listed within the next 12 to 18 months, you should completely ignore it as part of your salary. If it is getting listed, your startup or the company you're working for within a period of 12 to 18 months, you should actually ask the HR that at the end of year one and year two, how many of those stocks can you theoretically sell? If your HR comes back and says that a majority of the stocks you will get, you cannot sell before year three or year four, that amount is largely notional for you and you should see through that gimmick. The fifth way in which companies or HR increase your pay package is something called capability development fee. What they do is they take the laptop cost, they take your seat cost, they take the training cost and they add it to your package. So how do you use these five elements in your discussion? So now you know the ways in which HR typically inflates your package. So when you are negotiating with an HR of the next company, remove these elements of the package along with the reasons I gave you 
and then negotiate as we call apples to apples. If you like this video, do subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care.